All right, so we've modeled our basic cake. And what I want to do in this lesson is I want to touch on uh, the LOPS area, which is the new lighting and look development area. And it's also an area where you can do USD authoring. So USD is the new uh, open source uh, scene description format from Pixar, which is called Universal Scene Description. And it primarily allows you to import and export entire scenes, uh, including uh, camera, lights, geometry, materials, like everything from one software to another. So as long as your software supports USD, uh, it can easily just import export data. And what I want to cover is something very specific in USD uh, called variants. So a variant is essentially you're creating two varieties of the same asset. Like let's say if you have a tree with leaves and you want to create one tree, uh, which is the full thing and you want to create another tree which does not have the leaves. So it's technically the same geometry, but you're just hiding certain objects. So you, you get variations of the geometry or of your basic, of your full asset. Okay, so in our case over here with the cupcake, what I want to do is I want to create one version which is just the cake and the icing and I want another version which is the full cake. Okay, and then save that as a USD asset. Uh, this is just an exercise, like just so that you get an idea of what you can do with USD. We might not use it for the final lesson, but this is, you know, just a good, good way to understand what you can do with it. Okay, so before we continue to, you know, before we start with LOPS, the one thing I want to do is, firstly, I want to create a group for this. Like, I didn't create a group for the Ferrero. So what I want to do is, I want to create a group and drop it in there and let's call it topping. And what I also want to do is, I, I want to just temporarily bypass this thing. Okay, so we're not going to do the Boolean. Like We'll just keep it on top. Okay, and I want to do one more thing, which is this has a name attribute in there. So that will cause some issues with uh, the USD because it will try to bring in the name as a separate geometry. So what we can do is I can just take an attribute delete and I can get rid of the name attribute. Okay, so we don't need this. We can also get rid of a few others. Like I don't want the curve, I don't want the mask the curvature. So I don't want any of these. Uh, the rest of the stuff I need. So that is fine. Okay. And then let's just take a null and we'll say out cake. Okay. So we have our, you know, our final cake over here. This is, this is about 800,000 polygons. Another thing I want to do is uh, the spheres are not geometry at the moment. Like the spheres are just like the primitives. So again, like if you bring that into USD, it's going to treat each sphere as an independent thing because it treats it as a particle. So what I want to do is just change this to polygon. Okay. So like your geometry count will go up, but then, you know, importing over there will be fine. What about a million polygons? Okay, let's try something. Let's just come into our VDB, you know, and just lower this to, let's say 0 0.015. So we'll just end up lowering the, the geometry a little bit. Okay. And even with the icing, like the, yeah, the VDB from polygons here, let's make it 0 0.1. Okay. Uh, this is a little too low. Mm. Yeah, I think this is okay. How much is this? Okay. And then also with the, uh, with this guy. So just overall, just reducing it a little bit. Let's try 0 0.02. No, that's a little too low. Yeah, okay, I think that's fine. Okay, so that should make some difference. Yeah, that's about 800,000, which is okay. Eventually, we're going to instance all of it. So it doesn't, you know, really matter. Okay, so let's come into USD and you know, do the do the whole thing. So I'll just save this file, we'll do a save as, and I have a file saved, so I'll just call it 5a. Okay, and then we'll just come to, you know, object level and I'll create a LOP network. Okay, so what you need to do, 
or what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it, I'm going to import it in pieces, not as a full object so that we have control over what needs to be kept and what needs to be deleted. So take a, take a SOP import and we can import the cake. So I want to do a couple of things. Okay, firstly, uh, switch on load as reference. Okay, the second thing is like you don't need the import path prefix. Let's give it, uh, let's give it a primitive path. Okay, so that essentially uh, USD forms like a directory structure, like a layer structure. So if you give it paths, it knows like exactly what name, what name structure or what directory structure it has to follow. So it just makes life easier. So what I can do is I'll just do a split pane top bottom and I will change the scene view to scene graph tree. And you can see like right now it is called SOP import. So instead of that, I'm going to call it a uh, cake. So this will be our basic thing uh, slash. This will be uh, basic. Okay. So we have, you know, like this thing here. So the main directory is called cake. And then we have something called basic. And what I want to import in here is I just want to import the cake and the icing and the paper. So that is what I want in here. And then I also want to give it a path for saving. Yeah, so I'll do a dollar hip, which is where the file is saved, slash uh, geometry. So if there are any directories that, uh, that don't exist, when you write this out to disk, USD will automatically write them. So you don't need to worry about that. And we'll call it slash uh, cake basic dot usd so this will be my this will be the path for this particular asset okay and then uh, i want to like because i eventually want to assign materials to this not right now but we want the asset like we want the groups to be able to assign materials what i'm going to do is take the import data and come down to subset groups and just get in cake and icing and paper Okay, so what will happen is you'll see that this has these three groups. These are important because this will allow you to assign materials. Like if you don't have this, you'll see like there are no, uh, there's nothing to assign materials to. Okay, so this is important. And we'll also, uh, I had created that attribute called paper. So I'll also import in paper. Okay, so this is done. This is fine. Now let's duplicate this and we'll also bring in the other two pieces. So just uh, let's call this cake basic. Okay, and then we'll do alt and drag it. So you'll get a duplicate okay. and call it uh, cake topping. And what I'll do here is we'll call this topping. And what I want is I want the other two. So sprinkles and topping, get rid of these three. And yeah, we don't need the attributes because this doesn't have the attributes and we want sprinkles and topping and delete this. And what you'll see now is if I connect these two, it's essentially built a directory for you, right? So because, uh, and yeah, one more thing is, uh, we need to change the, the name of the USD that is going to be saved. So we'll call this cake topping. So what's happened is like, you can see that this is, this is cake slash topping and this is cake slash basic. And it's essentially built a directory like that. Okay, so you have cake, you have basic, which has cake icing paper. So that's why it is important to, you know, give it a primitive path so that it knows, you know, what is going on. Okay, now another thing I want to do is what would be easier is if these are, instead of components, these are sub components so that it's like, you know, it just understands the directory structure is more clearer. So what I can do is you can take something called as a configure primitive. So technically lops is two things. It's a lighting and look development area, but it's also simultaneously a USD authoring area. So if you want to, you know, like author a full USD file and then export it to another, uh, you know, another software, then lops does all of that. Okay. So it's sort of like a node based USD authoring area because okay, so I can take configure primitive. And what I want to do is, uh, 
I want to set the primitive path. So the primitive path is slash cake slash uh, star. So everything in the cake directory. And we want to set it to subcomponent. So you'll see that it becomes, you know, a subcomponent. And you can also see the, the USD code that you are generating. So if I right click on this and I come to LOP actions and you say inspect active layer and you'll see the code that you have generated so far. Okay, so this is effectively what you have done. Like I don't understand USD code at all, but <laughs> if you do, then you know, this is basically what it is. So we've made cake, it's a group, and then we've defined two things. We've defined basic and topping, and they are subcomponents. And this is where, you know, they are being saved. So this has some attributes. See, so we generated the attributes. So it's got paper and it has these groups called icing, cake, icing and paper. That's the save path for it. So, you, so it's called cake basic. And then uh, this is the save path for this, which is cake topping. And that also has subset groups of sprinkles and topping and you know, so everything that you're doing is sort of like written over here in this code. Okay, now uh, let's build the variants. Okay, so setting up the variant is fairly simple, right? So if I take a null and we'll call this as uh, full kick and we will set something called as a prune. A prune allows you to delete stuff. So I can take a prune and it, you need to define like what exactly are you deleting. So we want to say, I want to delete slash cake slash topping. Okay, so if you come into the prune, that's what you, all it's doing, it's not really deleting it, it's just saying make invisible. Okay, so it just makes it invisible. That's essentially it. But in order to, you know, set an efficient code for uh, variants, you get something called as, uh, if you type variant, you'll get something called add variant to existing primitive, which creates like a sort of like a for each block. So what I can do is, uh, let's just call this out. And what happens is like we get the basic geometry coming in here. And in here we set our two variants. Okay, so we want, this is the first variant itself. Okay, we'll create a null for it, then the null will become the name of the variant. So this will be, we'll call it cake, uh, we call it full cake. Okay. And then I can take the second one, which is this, this guy, we'll create a null for that. And we'll call it uh, cake basic. Or let's call it uh, cake full. Okay, I think this is getting the one at the end because you know, this is called cake basic. So let's just change this. Let's call it uh, cake base. Because what I want is I, like, this is a little more important. So I don't want a one at the end of it. Okay, and just plug this in. Because these names will be taken as the names of the variant. And then in here, set the model name to cake. Uh, and that's basically it and set the primitive path to slash cake okay, because that's the path that we eventually want to take. Okay, so if you've done everything right, if I take a set variant and the variant is cake, okay, and you will get two things here. So we have cake full and we have cake basic. Okay, so that's, you know, effectively what you've done. So it's, you know, fairly straightforward. Well, actually not fairly straightforward. It, it does require a little bit of work. Okay, so we have done this. Now the final thing left is we want to set uh, like an output path for it. So I'll take a configure layer and we want to do, we just want to give it a safe path and the default primitive. So the default primitive is cake. Okay, and the safe path will be, we'll just call it cake. And then finally, you want to write this out. So take a USD ROP, okay, which will allow you to write it out. Okay, so just, you know, plug this in, come to output processing and make sure that relative paths is on because it will write it out for you. Okay, to the geometry folder. 
and this we won't put it in the geometry folder we'll take it in the root and we'll just call it uh, cake asset and let's just write it so you just hit save to disk and now that it's written out to disk let's just take a reference node which allows you to import it so we'll pick up a reference node and come down here it'll ask you for the reference file so click on reference file and we have cake asset and there you go okay, and then I can just take this and call it cake and if we have done this right we should have you know see so we have basic and topping currently they are hidden so if you take a set variant we should be able to set our variant okay so we can set it to like cake and see we have cake full yeah and then we have cake basic okay now I did make a mistake here because the set variant here is uh, this is important because what this defines is what will be the basic type when you import it okay so what we've done is like the basic like this is what will get in what will be your default geometry so if you want the full cake to be the default geometry then you keep this to cake full and now if I write it out again if I say save to disk so now if I take a reference and I pick up the cake asset and click there and we'll change this to slash cake and see so now what it's doing is it's bringing in the full cake so now when I go to variant like the everything is everything is the same like nothing has changed except that the default geometry is the full geometry and then we have the variant of making the basic okay so you can actually you can just make like you know two of these and we can have that's this is the basic and then this can be the full so we technically got two different pieces of geometry so when you take this reference into another software you will get you know options of having multiple sort of model types within one single asset okay so whether it's uh, like a tree with leaves without leaves or with fruits without fruits you know like you can have an n number of things you can have a character with uh, multiple variations of clothing or you know whatever you want so it gives you a lot of different uh, things that you can do by saving technically just a single file all right so that's basically it so this is how you can generate a variant out of a single model or generate multiple variants out of a single model so in the next video uh, i'm going to start creating more uh, types of cakes okay so we have this one i want to create two more so we'll have two lessons i'll create sort of two more toppings so just to have like a little bit of variety in our cake